crowd, isn't it? Yes. Lady up there thawing a turkey. <laughs> my name is Johnny Carson. My job is to make you laugh. Your job is not to report me. You know what today is? You should know this. I do know. Ah, oh, I want to see if anybody else does. You know what, the, what birthday is it is today? Marine You're right, Corps. the Marine Corps. United States Marines yes. were founded this day in 1775. And Ed is in the Marines. He was on our side. And, <laughs> matter of fact, you are even now a colonel? Yes. In the Marine Corps Reserve. Yes. So this is a big day for Ed. And, and every day to celebrate the founding of the Marine Corps, Ed and his old buddies get together and they invade a nude beach. <laughs> Gung-ho! <laughs> well, what else happened? President Carter held another press conference today. Do you realize that is the 19th press conference he has had since he became president nine months ago? And I'll say one thing for Mr. Carter. He's not afraid to answer questions and uh, tell it like it is. <laughs> Unfortunately, the way it is is the way it was nine months ago. <laughs> That's a little problem right there. I feel sorry for Mr. Carter. Nothing's happened in nine months. You can get pregnant, have a baby in nine months. <laughs> Mr. Carter hasn't even had morning sickness or anything. <laughs> I think the president is getting a little worried about the latest findings, the popularity poll. At the end of the press conference yesterday, one of the reporters said, Thank you, Billy's brother. <laughs> it's kind of a uh, put down, wasn't it? <laughs> this, uh... <laughs> oh, no, no. No, no. This is not a halftime rally. What? Is... And even then, they weren't sure. <laughs> wow! This. This was speaking of the Carters. This this was the week that Billy Carter was on the cover of Newsweek magazine, holding a can of beer. Did you see that? I don't know whether you know this, but in the event, if anything should happen to Billy, Foster Brooks automatically becomes the president's brother. <laughs> He's got a lot of problems, you know. The, the uh, unemployment is still going up. Inflation is bad. The economy is not the best. I know the economy is in bad shape. Today, you may not believe this. Guy stopped me on the street, stuck a gun in my ribs, and said, this is a stick-up. I'm desperate. I need $500. And I said, are you in trouble? And he said, yes, I'm a transvestite. I haven't got a thing to wear. That's how expensive uh, one of uh... Fortunately, I... Uh... Or unfortunately. Or unfortunately, either, either way you want to look at. Uh... You know, not only is the economy down, but people are laughing less. Uh, I found that goes when the economy is depressed and people don't have jobs, they seem to laugh. Uh... So that's another thing the administration is screwing up my monologue. <laughs> Luckily, I don't worry too much about inflation. I don't, um, even I'm not proud, but you know, I have a fine financial advisor, uh, Bombastic Bushkin, who, uh, <laughs> who has made a lot of money for me. He specializes, he can make money in any business. Bushkin specializes in arson. <laughs> and uh, I'm not in the, uh, I'm not in Wall Street, in the market as such. I have one investment in Wall Street, and Bat Guano Futures. <laughs> <laughs> Which I meant. But uh, Bushkin has uh, put me in some pretty good investments. I own an all night uh, coffee shop at the Alamo. I, uh, I'm in the cattle breeding business. That's very good, you know. I have a, I have a ranch with 100 head of cattle, 99 bulls, and one cow. I, uh, I want to sell, but the cow won't let me. So. Uh, he also... Oh. That's you want. That's what you want. High-class material like that, huh? <laughs> Bushkin's also got me into sports. It's big business. I cater victory dinners for the Tampa Buccaneers. <laughs> I, uh, I represent Chris Everett for bowling. I represent Billy Carter for all milk commercials. And I'm in a syndicate backing a stud farm for Morris the Cat. It's just for some of the things. Well, let's see what else has happened. Doris Day is in the news today. Did you read that? Doris Day is embroiled in some kind of dispute with the uh, Beverly Hills, city of Beverly Hills. According to the Beverly Hills Code, you're allowed to have, I think, three dogs. And they say, allegedly, reportedly, uh, Doris Day has 11 dogs. 
I understand that she has the only house in town that guests wipe their feet after they leave the house. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know about that. I just figured out K Sera, K Sera, I think means on the paper. On the paper. <laughs> Some doctors in Massachusetts. This was, what, what, is, what is that little thing you doing? Was a. Uh, weird, weird. There's a, there's a medical note. Have discovered a, a, a new strain of flu. The dairy farmers are apparently catching from their, from their cows. That's true. I'm not making this up. There are three symptoms of the cow fever. You have a. You have a fever and a sore throat and an uncontrollable urge to chew your cud. <laughs> One cow came down with a flu and asked for four Kleenexes. Did you know that? <laughs> You're right. Okay, I don't want to keep you any longer because I know you, uh, you've got more important things to do. Uh, did you tell them who we have on the show tonight? Yes. Did they seem uh, excited? Did they seem excited about uh, yeah. that at all? Uh huh? Miss Dinah Shore is with us tonight. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Charles Nelson Riley, Terry Gar, and Thalassa Crusoe. Yeah. And we will be back to you. We'll be right back. Yes, sir. to the United States Marine Corps, 202 years old tonight. Semper, Semper Fidelis? Is Semper that, Fidelis. Or is that the Boy Scouts? Well, that's the Marine Corps. Oh. Semper Fi. What's the Boy Scouts motto? Always prepared. What is that? Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Right. Coast Guard is always prepared. No, the Boy Scouts is be prepared. Be pre always prepared. Oh, all right. Semper Paratus, I believe. You're right. Did yes. you celebrate today in the Marine Yes, Corps? I did. What about, how does one celebrate? Uh... I took my back out to lunch. That's right. We mentioned this last night. Yes. Ed threw his back out and uh, yeah. somewhere... See, you don't know. You never had that. You don't understand what that is. It's a funny no, I'm not, uh... ailment. There's a slip? Does the disc go? Nothing. Uh... It's just... It's crazy. It's something with the muscle. You move a funny way and all of a sudden you can't stand to sit. <laughs> are you taking... Sit to stand or something. Are you, uh, are you taking some I uh, found medication? some medication, yes. I found... I spoke to the doctor's doctor and uh, Doc's doctor got me something. Ross. Oh. Dr. Ross. And, uh... <laughs> it's, a, it's a shame to waste it on pain, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're going to go throw your back out again next week. Yes. No, I know it's very discomforting yeah. and I don't yeah. mean to make light of it, but there's not much you can do. With Nothing. It. You just have to... They always say put heat on it. Well, you ever notice that? Take yes. aspirin and put heat on it. I'm going to put some heat on it tonight. No rest. <laughs> Wait a minute. This it thing. is the Marine Corps' birthday. This is, yes, that's right. Yes. Ho ho. Ho ho. You're still a reserve colonel. Well, I'm retired reserve. Oh, what does that mean? What happens in the war? Fulfilled... They don't take you, do they? No, that has to be a they, real emergency. If they take you... Yes. Uh, You're going with me. I know, I know. <laughs> if they take you, I know it's all over. <laughs> that's and, right. uh, no, it means you've fulfilled your satisfactory term and you've retired. And you've got your honors and whatever, and that's it. Oh. Yes. Do you rate a, a salute? Uh, would you oh, rate yes. a salute for me if we met on the street and I was in my... Yes, my because uniform? of your rank. What was your highest rank that you attained? Uh, lieutenant, uh, junior grade, and then uh, the naval forces of yes. the United States. Then I would rank... <laughs> yes. Hey. Yes, I would rank... That's what I... A salute. Why is that? Well, because a colonel outranks a Lieutenant J.G. Colonel's right. like a captain in the Navy. Well, if I would have stayed in the reserve, I would have been a captain. Do you realize that? That's right. But you didn't, so start saluting. <laughs> okay. Uh, we had some material here, but uh, I don't know whether it's really... Uh... How do you feel about it? Uh, so, so. Uh... No, I'll tell you where, where, where it came from. So, uh, some uh, disc jockey, a fellow by the name works under the name of Dr. Demento. Uh... <laughs> Right? Sounds like one of your characters. Oh, he sure. is Dr. Demento. He was educated at UCLA and received his master's degree in music. And his radio program, The Dr. Demento Show, is syndicated all over about 600 stations throughout the world. Wow. And he came up with the 10 worst song titles. And these are actual titles. I thought some of them were jokes. 
Did you know Ice Cream, You Scream, We All Scream for Ice Cream? Yes. Was a song? There was a song, yes. All right. They needed a songbird in heaven, so God took Caruso away. <laughs> was a song written when Enrico Caruso right. passed away. Plant a watermelon on my grave and let the juice soak through. <laughs> Actual titles. Where did Robinson Caruso go with Friday on Saturday night? I've heard that. I know that. I thought that was a joke. I don't know it's a song. Come after breakfast, bring your lunch, and leave before supper time. How could you believe me when I said I love you when you know I've been a liar all my life? That was a hit. Yeah, here's one. I've got those wake up 7.30, wash your ears, they're dirty, eat your eggs and oatmeal, rush to school blues. <laughs> Would you rather be a colonel with an eagle on your shoulder or a private with a chicken on your knee? Right. A woman is only a woman, but a good cigar is a, a smoke. smoke. Right. I thought that was originally said by, by Mark Twain. No, he, what he said is what the country needs is a good five cents five cigar cents or something cigar. like that. Ten worst song titles. We have come up with some others that we think should be in that list. You mean you didn't cover all of them? We didn't cover all of those. We have some more bad songs that if if they made these songs... Right. These would be bad. Bird drops keep falling on my head. (laughs) It happened in Monterey, but I know a doctor in Tijuana. (laughs) Didn't give it. (laughs) I want a girl just like the girl that married dear old Lee Majors. (laughs) The moon was yellow, and I was pretty chicken myself. (laughs) Bobbles, bangles, and boobs. (laughs) Baby, you've done me wrong, but keep doing it till you get it right. (laughs) These are strong folks from the heart. Pot gets in your eyes. We should have had that. (laughs) My heart says yes, yes, but my pacemaker says no, no. No, I don't like that one. <laughs> I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, just like the ones I used to snort. <laughs> what is this thing called love? Because my doctor has another name for it. <laughs> Darling, I am growing older, so let me in the bathroom. That could be a hit. <laughs> Nobody does it better, except maybe your brother Al. <laughs> Those are songs that should have been, been in Dr. Yes. Could have got a dinner. You've got a punch <laughs> You can't. You can't. You can't let him sit there. You've got to punch those. We have Miss Dinah Shore with us tonight, Charles Nelson, Riley, Terry Gar, lovely young lady, and Thalassa Crusoe, whom I'm sure, whom I'm sure you all know, is one of the expert gardeners, mm-hmm. and she's a delightful and, and she's funny, delightful lady. We will do this. Dinah Shore will be with us in just a couple of seconds. Give me one of those pills. There's a man in terrible pain and sitting here giggling and laughing his head no, off. You want to know the truth? It hurts you. You're hurting me because it hurts to laugh. Really? You've heard that it hurts the only when I laugh. It Look, hurts. I give you rest during the monologue. No. Why do you? <laughs> you got seven or eight oh, minutes. You got silliness. seven minutes of rest right there. Oh. Here's a, a good friend, a lovely lady, a great talent, and uh, like people in the country don't know that she's beginning her fourth year as a star of her own show, The Dinah Show. One of the first ladies of not only television, the entertainment business, Miss Dinah Shore. Congratulations. You're starting your fourth. You're just ending the fourth, right? Or starting? I think we're starting. It's hard to tell. You do. It kind of blends together, doesn't <laughs> yes, it? Yes. I thought, yeah, you might have noticed that, too. Yeah. It, but, it, life is, uh... but that's your current show. You were working at another show before that. Yeah, so we that's... had Dinah's Place, but right. that was about four years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gee, I hope it doesn't... I mean, that's not a significant... <laughs> what? It, I hope that isn't significant to any degree. The four is not my magic number. I've oh, got... no, no, oh, no, no. Oh, no, i got a lot more. And I read the other day where you're going to continue... Yeah. It's a good show. 
Yeah, thank you. You get some thank good you. people on your show. You had me on there. Ed has been on oh, your show. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's I didn't mean it's a good show. Yeah. Oh, no, wait the a minute. Best. It's good people. The, I didn't mean to say it that way. It's a good show. I've been on the show. I meant that you, you know get something. a lot of people on that there. That was and... one of my favorite. Well, Ed's on yeah. a lot. And one of the best, uh, really one of my favorite shows we ever did was the one that we is did that right? together. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you why it was fun for me is because a lot of the people who were working there, the same crew, they're working in that studio. I used to do a show out of there in 1955 or 1956. And they're still there. And a lot of the people are still there. And it was very strange walking in there. Uh, Johnny, I get the same feeling when I come over here because everybody, all of this crew, they all did the Chevy shows. And that was right. about 1955, 56, How many 60. of the crew here? The, the guys are All the guys. Please. Oh, that's it. Guy in the See, audience. Guy in the audience sitting there. <laughs> a majority of one. It's the same guy in the audience. Well, during the monologue, went this way. <laughs> I guess they're all big. They're probably around, uh, they're around the building because they're taping other shows in yeah, here. Sure. Well, thank you for coming. Oh, Would I'm you good. rather be the interviewee or the interviewer? What's what's easier for you? You know something? It is a no, darn I know sight easier. It's much easier to be the interviewer. I was going to say that. It, as a matter of fact, I find that I, I do that um, subconsciously. And that it's, in lieu of going to parties, uh, doing a show is much easier. And I used to go to parties because I would see Freddie DeCordova and I'd see you and Joanna all the time and, and, and Janet and everything. Right. But I don't uh, do that anymore and I find that going to parties is a problem. Because, you're, because you've done all your discussion and conversation with people in the course of the week, and you know pretty much we, uh, when, when yeah. people come on the show, they have something they want to talk about or perhaps has, have something to plug, and you're briefed about it ahead of time. And you, you're talking The about. conversation is comfortable and, and takes a, a predictable track right. from time to time. You go to a party, they can ask you any darn thing. Yeah. You know? You so, could be sitting there and somebody could just, uh, I mean, you haven't been briefed, I, and I'm not used no. to answering. Suppose you were sitting here. What would you ask you? you Me? Follow? Suppose you were interviewing yourself. What question would you ask that what? somebody has not asked you? And there, there, there well, that we can, that we can, that we <laughs> yeah, can, you, you know, can we can answer and talk about. <laughs> well, there are, well, there are personal sides of our lives that most people don't talk about. Certain boy, you've really got me stumped. I you mean, what is there that hasn't been talked about? I haven't read lately. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> are you in there this week? I, oh God, I hope not. Right. Um, who have you wanted to interview or have on your show that? as for whatever reason said, hey, I'd love to do it, but it's been evasive, and, or just won't, frankly, Never do oh, it. The, Well, I can think of a lot of people. Right now, I, I, I really uh, would adore to interview Golda Meir. You know, but I'd probably well, be she's in our country now. I know it. I know it. I think that's what made me uh, think of it, because yeah. uh, I've been trying to reach her. I would love to interview her, but I would probably ask her something dumb, because I'm so impressed with people who have accomplished things like that, that I probably would ask her for a recipe for chicken soup instead of, you know, something significant. She'd probably uh, give it to you, too. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? You know? But I, I, I've seen you do this, too, Johnny. I, it, it happens. You, there are people uh, that you, you're impressed by. That's true. The, uh, that you're in awe of, and, and, and you'll sit there... Um, and you can't think of anything to ask him. It's yeah. absolutely true. We First time I had Monty Hall on, I was absolutely... Yeah. <laughs> but he could cover it for me. But he covered for me oh, and got me out sure. of it. Well, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. A few people come to mind. Oh. People in the arts or sciences or something, and I'm, I'm a little awkward in that area. I, but and, and intimidated at times. I remember the first time I had William Buckley on. Oh, and William Buckley can't intimidate you. But he's so nice, and he's darling, and he's charming nice. and wonderful, and I'm so impressed with him, and I, you know, uh, his command of the But Bill can give you a look like you just ask him, you know, so the dumbest question in the world, and he gives you that. <laughs> <laughs> and you just want to go into the, into the oh, desk, you know. Did, was, did I hear something that means we have to leave for a moment? If you choose to. You're familiar oh, with this, of course, he, why we if leave. You, if we you sell products. I know you're not familiar I, with this. No. That's why we have stopped. Oh, is that stuff. what it is when you say we'll be right back? We sell something. <laughs> you never knew that. No, I just said <laughs> You lie. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. Great. Dine and I were talking during the commercial about the problem of, the, of doing a show and then later out going to people's homes, like we were out to your place the other That's night. Right. And, and you do feel like you have to uh, 
be oh. like you are on your show or oh, perform yeah. or something. Oh, the danger is if they don't... I mean, we know each other well and we go to dinner all the time. They come to my house and I'll, I'll go to yours. But the, if you go to a dinner party where they're grading you and, and, <laughs> and the conversation hasn't been absolutely scintillating for the first two or three minutes, you know you're going to be moved down the table. Just, just like the it couch. I know, like it happens on the show. The feeling if you're not doing well, the host is going to say, would you move down to the end of the table and we'll bring in the next diner or something? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, weird feeling. Yeah. You interviewed I, Jerry Brown recently, did you? Yes. Our governor we, of California. Up we, in his office, you did that. It was great fun. We went. I really was absolutely fascinated. He Take, didn't give me any alfalfa shoots. That, is he on? Is he on? Well, oh yes, he gave me Prince or? Charles, didn't he? I did, did you? I was, I was out of town when Prince Charles That's was here. Right. Well, the, our I thought it was great that the prince, the heir apparent to the throne of England, and Jerry Brown together. I call him the prince and the pauper. <laughs> well, Jerry Brown is very frugal. That's He's setting right. a fine example, you know. Yeah, I think so too. I'm, but, I'm a great fan of his. I. I, after that interview, even more so, really? it was fascinating. But we, 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 that was all part of our California week, and we, you know, got out of the studio a little bit, and it's fascinating, it really is. You get the feeling he may run uh, for, for president in uh, three and three and a half more years? I don't think there's any question about it. Yeah, I, I get that don't feeling. Don't you think so? I would I, guess so. I suppose if a man is a politician, yeah. no matter... We're not, not, we're not taking a stand here, I, yes. but I think a politician, if he really, is, that's his job, I suppose most of them aspire for the, the top job. Sure. And the top job as a politician is the President of the United States. And when you think about what we do to them most of the time, you wonder why anybody wants it. Yeah, it's got to be a horrendous job, because no matter what you do, half of the people are not going to like it. Not exactly. Look at the, what happens to the poles. It's like a, a ski jump yeah. up and down over, over the hill. I heard somebody told me you took up scuba diving lately. Have you never done that before? No. I would really, well, you don't, you know, I'd really never had the chance. In a Beverly Hills swimming pool, you just don't go scuba diving. And I've never <laughs> been to the Caribbean. I've always, my, that's where I learned, though, oh, to scuba dive lovely. in my pool. So I, I went scuba diving. You took the official the lessons and got certified and all that. Got certified, and we went that. into a big tank in, in San Diego uh, with a whole bunch of big fish. Really nice. I love that. Now, what are you going to do if you go down, you go down to the Bahamas or something, and you're down there and... A barracuda comes up. What, what would you do? What would I do? Mm -hmm. Did uh, they teach you? Oh, there's a barracuda. A barracuda comes up. Well, I, 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 I'd, I'd scream. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, I'd that's right. The first thing is just screaming. That's right. I'd just scream. And I'd say, I mean, don't you handle the same way you do a mugger? No, no, <laughs> no, no. no. You'd be very... <laughs> No, 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 that gets some excited. No, you what just, do you do? You just be very quiet. Yeah, and promise not to bleed, so he'll... No, it's a sharks that are going to follow you. Isn't that it? Well, I don't know. I always like the books. The books are so wonderful. They say sharks generally do not attack. They are just curious. <laughs> and you always wonder if the shark has read that same book. <laughs> I don't know how they figure that out. Well, but sharks will not. Only if I, you're bleeding will they attack. I'd like to know if a shark is intellectual and, and uh, you know... They don't have too much of a brain. They no. are pretty much automatons. No, I think my... I've seen sharks scuba diving, and most of them don't really do it. <laughs> what? You've sharks seen... Sharks scuba diving. Well, no, I was scuba diving, and I... <laughs> you were scuba diving, and <laughs> See, that's a basic freshman English test. What is wrong with this sentence? I saw sharks scuba diving. I was scuba diving and I saw sharks. While, right. Or I saw sharks while I was scuba diving. A bad, uh, yeah. bad construction there. No, I, I, I would absolutely panic. I know. No, they're curious. They, unless they're hungry. Yeah. Who knows? I want, I want, Who knows? Yeah. That's the whole thing. That's How do you know when they're hungry? Be, they don't come. There's not a bell that says lunch. I mean, <laughs> They eat when they get hungry. So that's got to be a certain expression on their face you have to look out for. I just personally don't have any desire to look out for it. So you're going to limit it just to the tank uh, that's diving. Right. I, I went down and there's a tank. We did all kinds of crazy things on, in this California week. I scrimmaged with the Oakland Raiders. Oh, come on now. I did. What do you mean you scrimmage with the Oakland Raiders? Oh, you know. Girl type scrimmaging. With Otis Sistra? Oh, People like no, that? No, actually, no. It was Kenny Staver. He, yeah. He, uh, well, he, that makes sense. He, yeah. He threw, him, he threw a pass. That's what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> According to People Magazine this week, he does that pretty well. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I volunteered to uh, accept it, uh, catch it. What is did, it? Did you? Yes, I did. But who's got time? <laughs> <laughs> busy, busy, <laughs> busy. Busy, how busy, busy. His schedule and my, you know, that sort of thing. Hey, look, but, I know you can't stay tonight, and you've got other things to do. I thank you for coming. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Yes. Here's one of our uh, here's one of our favorite people. He is on the show frequently. A most talented man is an actor, a director, a 
raconteur. Would you welcome Charles Nelson Riley? Good. I'm thinking of you. Thank you. See, you seem to be in some uh, sort of a snit. I was going to yes. <laughs> Does it show? Well, yes, I'm a little upset. What? Uh... Well, I didn't do anything wrong or anything. I mean, I didn't. It's just that I'm in the middle years now, or a little past it, like the twilight zone. Oh. Well, it's true. I face it. And I have to... How are you? I'm fine. Good. And I have to face Aren't the fact that I'm... you I am? Well, you're always fine. That's what I'm getting to. Oh, I'm sorry. You see what I mean? Superstars are fine always. That's oh. my whole uh, beginning. I, I know you have a few things now and then. You're still Entertainer of the Year. I was the first to congratulate. The year is 12 months. That's I'm not forgetting the rain. I, I know See, that. many people do. Right. <laughs> But I just want to say that I have been on this show for 16 years, and I've never left early. <laughs> oh, you mean... Well, I mean, you mean what? I mean what happens every week here. I and I think something... I just will discuss it, because I think it's probably psychosomatic. Right. I'll tell you why in a minute, because I'm getting to it. It's all built up carefully. It's a... <laughs> but the thing is, you see, I have been on this show for 16 years. Yeah. I've never left early. Well, that's true. That's true. And people come all the time. Like, last time I was on here, Margaret left early. Yes. And now tonight, Dinah, who's a lovely girl, she'll what? Notice something else. They never tell you where they're going. No. No, you know why? Because they're not really going anywhere. <laughs> but you always are kind of true. They never say, but you're condescending. You see, you, you get so in awe, like in awe. Don't be in awe of me. I'm a simple, humble person. Yes. <laughs> but the thing is... <laughs> but the thing is... <laughs> They never say where they're going. Now, I was I asked the producer, the staff calls me, you know. They're lovely. Yes. Disgusting. <laughs> but the thing is, they taped the show. They said I could say this from 5.30 say to 7. It, certainly. Now, will you tell me where the hell everyone goes at 5.45? <laughs> There's no place to go. You go at 8.30, at 10 o'clock, 11. You go to the dentist at 9, the doctor at 10. <laughs> Nothing goes on at 5.45. But they're all what you say. Sorry, you have to rush away. Where the hell are they going? That's all I <laughs> I have to catch you. Where, where I are know you've got to say where to... you're going. I know where you're going. You're going home to parboil vegetables. No, no. Uh, no? I'm going to catch a plane so I can plug my shows in Vegas. Don't you, you know see? where you're Okay. Going? Well, I just want to say no, one thing. I'd yeah. like to... That all the stars are not exactly like Dinah Shore. No. You know, I mean, there are different they stars. They all leave at 6.45, but... but I just thought you ought to have those. Yes, that's and call you later. Can... I love that. <laughs> <laughs> We have a date in Florida. No, I want to Do discuss Do I just talk into the flowers now or no, what? It's okay, oh. fine. Now, you see, that was class. That style. was nice. That well, was you style. see, there are a few. A few. Like, I understand right. Joe Namath. Joe Namath left. Joe Namath left. I'm wearing a Joe Namath tuxedo shirt. Oh, really? He's not here to see it. <laughs> he got to get at least 85 to 93 cents. So, you see, he misses it. Then the other thing that bothers me 16 years. Lola Falana, Charo, and I, and Ed, we stay. We're always here. Right. Yes, that's true. And we're, we just deserve, we're the oppressed guests. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? We never go anywhere. I have no place to go. This comes off at 7.01. Why did you? <laughs> well, I wore it because I have no other place to go. It's just, this is it for oh, me. Oh, you're not going any place I'm not later? catching anything. What am I going to plug? Do I plug a record? Am I holding a record up? Do you see a record? Do you see a book? <laughs> Do you see a pilot film? Do you see <laughs> no. a TV series? <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> but I come well, in. Then, then let me ask you something. All right. Yeah. Well, I don't care. Yeah. Then what are you doing here? Well, there's no other place to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was in a play once. I was in a play once. I was in a play, yeah. uh, Rosalinda, musical. And I played Prince Orlovsky. Right. Which Prince usually, Orlovsky. if it's done as the opera, a woman plays. Ah. But for some strange reason, I was playing it. <laughs> in Rosalinda, I played Prince Orlovsky. And the second act is a jail. Is a jail scene. 
And they said, Prince, it was 4 a.m. in the morning, and I come in, you know, the Prince, ta-da-da. Big... You know, it wasn't a big orchestra, it was two trumpets, it was theater but... in the round, a dinner theater. But it sounds impressive. Maybe it was just the ta-da, you know? So I came in, and they said, Prince, what are you doing? In a jail. I said, only place still open. And that's how it's the only place it's the open. the only thing open this time. The other day. thing that bothers me is 16 years. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I see on the screen, our guests are taken by Morgan Limousine. Now, I've never seen a hubcap. <laughs> I've never seen... I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I figured... I figured for 16 years I should ride around in a thing from anywhere to four to six weeks. Right. Carte blanche. You've never been with a Morgan limousine. I never saw the guy. Well, then the other thing, I'm going to get it all out because good, it's the menopause of my life. Obviously and I'm this... She's on the plane already. All right, so the other thing is the hotel. You don't even know. It says, I'll quote, because okay. I watched the show. I know you do. You know, you've got to know I am faithful. Thank you. My career is over, but I'm here. <laughs> and the thing is, that's why you have psychosomatic, it's couchitis. You see, if we had places to go except this couch, we would be all right. We would move better. Lola Falana and I will stay. We'll st all right, so the other thing is, I'll get to the point. I'll get to the point. Yeah. Guests of the Tonight Show <laughs> yes. stay at the Sheridan Universal. I haven't seen the lobby. <laughs> Sixteen years. Now, I just want, give me a slip. Well, give me a slip for a free breakfast. That's all. I'll go in just something that I feel like I belong. Now, let me explain something. You understand something. what I mean? I can't I, plug I anything. It's over. You see, I know this. I'm facing. I'm grateful. Those are guests who come from out of town who have to stay overnight. Yes, but I drive over the hill. You just want to stay, is, at, at you want to stay in the valley overnight? And the and other then... thing is parking. Can we discuss parking? If you would like. Sure. All right, now I'm a star. Yes. Well, right. Yes. All right, then the other thing is to get here, to get dressed up. I don't like to get dressed up. Then, uh, <laughs> I love you. Then the thing is, I put on my hair. You understand? This yes. is not my own hair. I know because that. I know that because I say that and I'm trying to give it like, like, or you try to give faith and courage to people through your handicaps. Just don't open a window. So this is... So just don't open a window. Okay. I mean, if you go dancing and you're under a ventilator, it's over. You know what I mean? I always see these now, ads where guys are swimming. Things. Guys are swimming and they come out and it, they say you can swim in this. Can you swim in Have this? you seen the head underwater? Or like you can swim in it and the water's somewhere here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, but not under. Oh, no. no, not in this ocean anyway. Maybe in Florida on a warm day. <laughs> but anyway, you come to park and there's no place to park. Well, you know why? Don't because you don't know that. Have you seen the dressing rooms downstairs? Yes, they are rather shabby. What, like... <laughs> well, I mean, they're not... Well, I mean, you should be like the mayor. This is your universe. It's brilliant what you've done for American entertainment. <laughs> but like the mayor, visit the slums. Look and see what the other people are... <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted... I wanted to... I wanted to say something about the hair, because it is funny. I don't, right. don't, it's a funny thing, because my reruns are, are on ball, so, I mean, what could have happened? Last night, you were wonderfully funny. I laughed, I screamed. You're a wonderfully funny man, and it's wonderful. But anyway, seriously, you know the two of you. But anyway, uh, I got it on tape now. It's on tape. Uh-huh. Well, you don't know, because superstars don't have these problems. Well, you, see, you, just, you have your own clothesline. You've got a big dressing room upstairs. You know what I mean? The ballet says, well, you wore the blue too, say try the red tonight. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, you know, you, why did you go to the cleaner's lab? But anyway, see, I forget, since the war, I forget. But you what, have, uh, I, Oh, the tape. The tape. <laughs> see, it's the old right. injury right. coming back. Right. right. All right, so a friend of mine says, why don't you use the new invisible tape? I said, oh, I'll get the invisible tape. So I go to a beauty supply shop. Now, when you're 46 and you enter a beauty supply shop for the first time, that tells you you're in trouble. You should have gone at 21 and get the ball rolling. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I go in. <laughs> they're human. They're lovely. Of course they are. Then you go in. I love them. So you go in and you buy this little package of invisible tape. Right. Now this, and you, you, you don't want to say it's for you because, you know, there's nothing fake here. So you go and you say, my, my sister, uh, do you, she wanted the invisible tape <laughs> because she had a sickness and the hair all fell. I didn't know. <laughs> so you get the box of invisible tapes and you go home. Now, to do anything like this, you take your, I, I have to take my glasses off to do anything. You know, that's right. invisible taping. So you read the directions and it says, cutely, little, little cute little red box. It says that when you take the second white tape off, you're left with your invisible tape. <laughs> and then it says... Laughingly, 
<laughs> Be careful because you know it is invisible. invisible. <laughs> so I go like this, and then suddenly I don't know where the tape is. And it's 10 minutes before I got to be to work, and I start to look for the invisible tape. Then anything that sticks, <coughs> then you go, that must be it, and then it goes all in fine. But I mean, I'm going back to the white tape. Ah, you know, the yes. double adhesive. You right. know, the bathroom looks like it's a Red Cross station in Iwo Jima. <laughs> but it's, it gives you a feeling of hope. Now, would you like another yeah, introduction? Now, what would you or... introduce? And to make well, believe I'm a guest that has to leave early. Now, think of it a minute. In awe, you are in awe, a superstar who has to go early. All right. Just go back. I'll give you an introduction. Like you're a biggie. All right. Now, another thing. Note for the orchestra. See how they are? They're all ready to go. I want the top ten introductions. You know what I mean? Governor Brown. Whatever. Do you know what I mean? Not the usual something, you know, you that go. I'm identified with. Okay. All right. Well, they'll be looking more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just go on, go on off. Now, notice you don't come out I'll right away. I'll introduce a guest who's never even been on the show. It's so big. Right. <laughs> Making his first appearance and a thrill for all of us. Right. In, in, within 16 years, has never been on the show. Slower. Yes. <laughs> One of the probably five or six top box office draws around the world. Two to three in the last poll. Probably has moved up to two or three just this evening. Uh, a sex symbol. Would you welcome Robert Redford? <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Bob's on a very tight schedule. Bob had to leave early. He has many other things to do, but we'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Can you stay? Do you have what is it today? Really I'm stay. Sorry, I'm you can really stay. It's Thursday. What is it? Thursday. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. <laughs> I've not met this young lady. You have oh, met her backstage. You're a lovely girl. Her name is a uh, charming young actress. Yeah, uh, she is co-starring in a movie called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Would you welcome <laughs> Terry Gar? Terry. Were you going over to the band? I guess so. I'm not sure. How are you? I'm okay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You've never been with us before, have you? Well, yes, I was. I was once with them. Um... You weren't out with me? No. John Denver. Ah, I didn't think you were on with me. Hi. Hi, Charles. Hi. Hi, Ed. I'm good. How are you? I know Ed from before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We run into that frequently on the show. <laughs> you mean from the show, or...? I think I worked with him on uh, uh, Sonny and Cher. Several times. Mm-hmm. I see. With Howard Cosell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you done a lot of... Uh, you like Howard Cosell? Well, be honest. You can be pretty honest on a show like this, you see. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, I like Howard Cosell. He's okay. <laughs> now, you're saying that with reservations. I don't want to make you say something you don't want to say, but... Oh, he was funny. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But you haven't done a lot of these shows, have you? No. Yeah. Are you are you comfortable all right? I mean, just... Yes, I'm real comfortable. <laughs> My hands are stuck you in look this like chair. You're make, you look like you're making your first flight on uh, Trans Debris Airlines or something. Like Why don't you just relax and uh, okay. pretend you're sitting in my living room at home. Oh, sure. Okay. And the wife is out of town. No, I... <laughs> no, I see that was... That was just silly. That was silly talk. You know that. Do I seem real nervous to you? No. no, are you? Why? No, I'm not real nervous. I just want to know if I seemed like it. I'm not nervous. <laughs> well, you... The chair is really not very comfortable, is it? I mean, no. to be perfectly honest with you. It's not like, is you. your living room like this? <gasps> no, no. 
No, not really. Uh, see the chair? You, you can't move in the chair. You're kind of you're kind of sit there, and you can't really move the chair or something like that. I just want you to to be you. Huh. You know, okay. relax and just pretend we were out somewhere sitting and just talking. Okay. okay. Where are you from? Huh? Oh. Where's home originally? Uh, here, the valley. Right in the right here in the valley. Mm-hmm. What part of it? Encino, Northridge, uh... North Hollywood. North Hollywood. Uh -huh. You up there, you say? That that's something. Mm -hmm. Went to school there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and after you left North Hollywood, you went oh. clear over to Hollywood, huh? Yes, yes, I did. And to, uh, see, sometimes I watch the show and I see people like me on it, go, just going uh huh, mm mm, uh huh, and I go, well, I'll never do that. And here I am doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, you watch it? You watch our show for Yes, I do. I like your show. Good. Thank you. But that's the problem with doing it because I think I'm watching it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I find out that I'm here and that I have to be listening. That's and I have to answer the questions. It's not, yes. Yeah. In other words, just like you're watching the show now and you don't feel like a, a participant in it. That's interesting. Well, you are here. Well, I am? Yeah, sure. You were good, Charles. I was all right. But it, how many years was I nervous? <laughs> Remember how nervous I he used was, to be? No, really, this For was many true. years. Isn't it true? Because Abs I love you, I'm in awe of you, and I, I was a mess. Right? He would come it's on. It's true, wasn't yeah. I? Yes. And absolutely be a basket case. And it takes a long time, and you're wonderful, and just do you, what you want to do, or you'll be fine. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to take my hair down. Now. Okay. okay, fine. You'll be comfortable. So, now. Did a, did a light just go out? Lights, yeah, lights yeah. change. It's a big show, baby. They do a light change. I see. <laughs> What happened to this humble little scared man all of a well, sudden? I mean, it's... I found someone or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, here we are. You're not, you're not no of me at all. I mean, you... Huh? Oh, come on. Oh, yes. Why? Well, because I'm a fan of yours. Well, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, that's nice. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you are. Just... I mean, I'm really here talking to you, huh? Okay. Yeah. Anything particularly you'd like to talk about? Did anybody give any advice... No. People have been on the show before. Yes, but I don't think it was good advice. Well, my friend Buck Henry, who was uh, your friend... Oh, there friend, you are, yeah. Wonderful. If he's watching, he'll probably kill me. But he said, just to say yes and no, and I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Buck. You're a big help. Yeah. That would help, yes. No. You were a dancer, I understand, originally. Mm-hmm. Where, where did you... Uh... <laughs> See, I'm doing it! Well, that's all yes, right. That's I only, that only asks for yes or no. Uh -huh. You know, what it was one supposed to say. When I say you were a dancer, that doesn't leave you, you know. If I said, how did you become a dancer, you can't very well say yes or no, right? So how did you become a dancer? Yes. Ah, right. Well, I went to dancing school. That's a good way to do it. Good way. This is scintillating. See, if you go to scuba diving school, you're not likely right. to become a dancer. You have to go to the school that teaches you what you wanted to become. No, I went to ballet school and was very obsessed with it and got into ballet companies and... And then um, danced in Swan Lake and all those things. Did you really? Professionally? Yeah. I was always in the court of ballet, and I didn't think I was ever going to get very far with it because of, uh, I always laughed, sort of. When you were doing them being the ballet? Yeah. I mean, because all the ballets have stories to them, and the ballet dancers are supposed to come out and act out the stories. And they always acted so funny that... I would laugh. It wasn't good for Yeah, me. you're not supposed to laugh during the ballet. No. If somebody's playing a swan and you were laughing, that's considered not... Uh, when they die. Not good show die. business. That's right, because the swan does die and right at the end, and it's not supposed to be comical. Um, <laughs> uh, some doctor said that girls should not start ballet when they're really young because it, their bones aren't ready to do it, and it can... It can uh, have you, heard the, have you heard anybody say that? What? One, look, I haven't asked that question before, and I want to get it out before I go to that great kinescope up in the sky. Uh, you know what I'm saying, that your, your bones are not... Uh, you mean they're too uh, supple, you know, this then it bad... Then makes them turn out like ducks. Uh, something like that. <laughs> oh, that's possible. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> can't do this. Well, yes, you can. You're doing just wonderful. Okay. Right. You're just doing wonderful. But what, what, are we being canceled? <laughs> what the hell is this? They're turning one light out at a time. These lights went out, another light just went out. I realize that Dinah Shore is somewhere over New Mexico. That's right. right and you're still here. See, television is cruel. This is the way they can tell you that it's all over. 
They, they no. don't have the guts to come out and tell you. They just tray. keep turning out the lights. So one night you come on your little candle on the desk here, and you'll be going. My fault? No. No. Have you been in other movies besides uh, this one you're doing, Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Well, yes. Hmm. Well, what, what's wrong? A... What's got a problem? No, no, light bulb just went on and off. Itself. Well, we don't care. What do we care? The light goes on. Don't let it bother you. Maybe that has something to do with my movie. Ah, that's right. That has to do with extraterrestrial... Outer space. Outer space. And, and when the UFOs come, all the lights go on and off. It's a little weird. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just a movie. It's just a movie. Do <laughs> <laughs> you believe in UFOs? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. No, there's nothing been proven about them. Yeah, a lot of people, you know... Credible people have said they've seen them and reported sightings. Some of them they can't explain. Which doesn't mean, of course, that they're from another planet either. Just because you can't explain something. No. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or yes. Tell about, tell about the first and second stages, and then the third stage with the movie. Tonight. Well, thank you. We have a here. light here. We need a key light like this. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Just give us our guests look nice. <laughs> Yeah. That makes me feel better. We want you to have well lit and everything and so forth. Until a low budget show and the host has a, has a flashlight. You want us to do a commercial? I think so. We're going to do a commercial. We're gonna, you're doing just fine, really. Mm -hmm. You really are. Okay. Yes, yeah. We'll do this. We'll come right back. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Has it opened yet? It opens uh, the 17th of yeah. November. And it's a fantastic, beautiful I've movie. I've heard and real good it. things about it. And I hope it's a big smash for you. Thank you, I did. All right. You, are you a gardener at all? Do you have little plants around your apartment and things like that? Yeah. Okay, good, because we have Thalassa Crusoe with us tonight. And she is one of this country's foremost gardening experts. She's a columnist for the Boston Sunday Globe. And she also shares her plant and gardening knowledge with television viewers in the Boston area. Would you welcome Thalassa Crusoe? It's nice to see you. Oh, it's nice to see you in bright lights, Johnny. Yes, we were almost, uh, thought we were going to have a blackout. How are our plants doing back here? We have a couple. Are those ficus? Yeah. Those are ficus. See, I am learning. You're doing very well. And are they, do they look healthy? Yeah, yes, but then I haven't got my glasses on. Yeah, we well, see they sit, uh, we're air conditioning in here all the time, and then the heat comes on, and then more air conditioning. That must be very difficult. Uh, yeah. Plants don't mind cold. They, they don't catch cold in the head if, if you have a... Or even air conditioning is when you put them under the air conditioning vent, they hate it. Really? Then they sound like me. I mean, they look as I do. I didn't know, I did not realize plants caught cold as such. Uh, in a manner of speaking, yes. Yeah. If their roots get cold, then they shrivel and die. They can't bear it. Haven't you had a begonia die on you? Had cold roots. <laughs> That started. <laughs> no, I've never had a begonia die on me. Uh, don't grow begonias. That's why, obviously. Are they very tender? I mean, they need a lot of care? <laughs> well, some do, yes. I try to learn something more every time that you're here. I try very hard to teach you. Yes, I know you do, and uh, <laughs> you have to go slow with me because I'm, I'm not... Is there such a thing as a green thumb? People that are more adaptable and have a natural people talent are, with plants? Well, there are people who learn more easily than others. Ah. <laughs> I think I, I think I, I got what you're saying. Uh, but you know you've heard that phrase. Some people have a natural ability. Yes, some people ability, do. Some and people, I think that's true. Some people are better with plants than others. I think they grow up with plants. Uh, sort of not Tarzan. Right. Not like your scuba diving. No, I put a sentence. greenhouse in at our house. My you wife did? wanted a greenhouse. Oh, that's worse than having fine babysitters. Have you ever tried to get a greenhouse sitter? What do you mean? You have to get when a... When you go away. What, what, do what you never mean? go away? Well, yes, frequently. Why? Then what happens to the greenhouse? Because that's very difficult. You'll get, you can't get no two people manage their plants the same I way. I never thought of that. Now, wait a moment. Well, can't we leave? And well, doesn't the greenhouse stay there and the plants just do what they do? The greenhouse probably stays there unless your crime problem is worse than ours in the east. Yeah. <laughs> but the uh, plants will not just stay there. I never so thought of that. In other words, somebody has to care for them and water them every day? And... Yes, yes, and somebody has to open the vents, unless you've got mechanical ones, in I which case have... they'll break down while you're away, because that's an extension of Murphy's Law. In gardening, absolutely everything always goes wrong, every single time. 
particularly the automatic vents that open the greenhouse. Yes, especially when you're away, I suppose. Always when you're away. Is this a good time or bad time of year for house plants, especially, I suppose, in the no, east? No, this is the cold? time of year for house plants because by now, except in California, the weather is such that you can't do much outdoors. Right. And so that you've brought your house plants in if you've had them outside or you're rushing away and buying some. Or you're looking at your house plants and when you put them on your windowsill and you say to yourself, how could I have thought that was a handsome plant? I'm going to have to do something about it. I mean, yeah. this is the moment. They require more care indoors, obviously, than they do outside. Yes, they do require a great deal of care indoors. Uh, they can require the sort of care you and I require. I mean, they, they need reasonable living conditions. Right. Not too much heat. Not all that open window at night in very cold right. climates. It was a... Is the plant poppy craze still going? It just seemed to be a resurgence a few years ago. I suppose because it, the environmentalists and people want to see green things and growing. And I don't think it was the environmentalists. Yeah. I think it was just people who wanted plants. Something growing around them? Uh, it may have crested a little, but I don't think so. No, people want plants. They want them tremendously. I bet you have plants, don't you? Yes, I do. Do you have plants in front, of, hanging plants in front of every window? No, I just have them sitting there. I mean, they're not hanging, they're sitting. Everything they're... you say will be used against you. I'm sure of it. What's a good plant for a beginner? What to, to, to start with? Oh, uh, a nice tough plant? Yeah, something that oh, you can uh, abuse. Uh, well, I mean, that well, doesn't you can have abuse to... a philodendron, but I bet you're beyond that point. What do you have the plant? Do you know what it is? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have a philodendron, yes, that one, that one stays. That one does well. Can I, but may I, I talk to may I ask you a question? Certainly. I have a lot of plants, uh -huh. and they're, they're like in limbo. They're all healthy. They're... Why, because they leave early? Huh? Do they all want to leave early? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but they're, they're, they're the, like in 1970 and 1977. Seriously, they're the same. They don't grow very much. And if I go to the east, to my friend's apartments, the, the green seems much richer than mine. Well, do you ever give them any food? <laughs> plant, do you, have, do you feed your plants? Yeah, I do. I fish, that fish thing, I have a fish oh, emulsion. You, yeah, after which you have to put a clothes peg on your nose. I know. But yeah, I mean, but there are other fertilizers. There are new kinds. I, I don't think you've sort of kept up to the times. There's a kind you mix into the soil that lasts for six months. Yeah, but we made that last time you were on the show. I do all this myself. I got 43 plants just that they're in limbo. It's good enough for me. You know what I mean? I can't go around. You're a bit of a complainer, aren't you? I he certainly <laughs> is. He certainly is. We're going to come back, and then you're going to, you're going to show, us, show us something I'm tonight. Going. Okay. I'm stay going. Stay here. No, you're going to stay. <laughs> and watch this. We'll be right back. <laughs> Now, even I know, with my limited knowledge, and you're, you, you're helping me, these are ferns, and this one is not in very good shape, That right? is a fern in very poor shape. Is yes, that too much good. fern for the pot? Too little fern for the pot, and a fern in acute misery, indeed, in need of intensive care. Uh-huh. Uh, I would call this your average neglected fern. I see, okay. What now, is this uh, thing here? Uh, well, that's a, a philodendron. I think ah. it's the kind called Robert. They, uh, it will be red. Mm -hmm. But what I thought we might talk about today, Johnny, if mm -hmm. you would like, Certainly. would be if by any chance you grew a plant as large as that, mm -hmm. it's not awfully easy to handle in the house. Right. I mean, you've got a pretty big house for that. And the thing is that you have occasionally to divide your plants. Divide your plants? Yes, sometimes you can uh, get a new plant by making a, a cut. You remember we made yes. it the, last time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can get a new plant by growing seed, and sometimes you can divide it. Now, you can't divide a plant that has only one stalk like that. Without killing it, right? Well, it's like trying to divide an apple tree. Okay. <laughs> but you can divide a plant... Do you feel a slight sort of jungly feel? This is too big, isn't it? I mean, it is much too big. It is perfectly gigantic. You can divide an enormous plant like that. So tonight we're going to divide a fern. Tonight we're going to divide a Boston fern. <laughs> you folks call your neighbors. We're going to divide a fern here. <laughs> now, you're supposed to have some equipment before you divide well, plants. Well, and, yes. you, and you've also got to tell yourself that it's going to do the plant good in the end to wreck it for the moment. Mm -hmm. So will you please start cutting that down for me while I get the things ready? What, with these little things? No, we shall be here all night. You're giving me 30 minutes. <laughs> Cut it down. 
What do you mean? Just... To get going, not on me. Just like this? Yeah. Take it down to a hairbrush. Well, won't that kill it? I'll, I'll, I'll cut it down. I'll cut it down. I'll cut it down. Ah, oh, I see. Oh, oh, oh. oh uh, I'll be plenty. Uh, what? That's what you wanted, right? That's what you said you. That's what you said you wanted. Okay, okay. Mr. Carson has now done what we wanted. There you are. And while he was doing it, I was getting. A... I'm just. I was getting a pulp ready. <laughs> and I bought it. What I am doing is washing this pot. Well. Because this is what they're going to have to put it into. We have three minutes now. Okay. Oh, Lummy, is that all? Would you mind getting that out for me? Certainly. How do I just pull it out of here? No, 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 no. Turn it upside down. What? Turn it upside Turn down. Turn it upside down. Well, sort of like that. Yeah. Now, if you would cut me a section of that plant, <coughs> I will have the pot ready for you, I trust, by the time you've cut through it. Well, I was I can just, uh... Carve me out a piece of cake. All righty. That's it. Good. Go on. Go on. Let the, let the nice people see what you're doing. Cutting up a piece of this fern. Well, you know, he's done the... Well, you said like a piece of cake. You have done absolutely.